All right, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have here? As many of you know, I have been collecting typewriters for a while now. And I have a nice wide assortment of different types of technology, different types of typewriters, whether they be manual or electric or electronic. And in this case, this is an electric typewriter. I do not believe there's anything electronic about it. I believe that this is a very, very rare knockoff version of the IBM Selectric typewriters, most notably known because of their ball font. They do not use type slugs. They actually use these balls. And just like the IBM Selectric, you can change the fonts by changing out the ball elements. More modern versions would go on to be made with um, the daisy wheel design. But this, I believe, was made in 1983. And I believe that this typewriter is the Correcto Ball XLI, or 1. It only lasted maybe a year. I do not know if they made any before or after 1983. I do know that they rebranded it as the Sears Correcto Sphere. Oftentimes, companies like Brother, Royal, Smith Corona, and such would rebrand their typewriters with all the same guts and everything inside, but put a badge on it that says Sears or J.C. Penney or Montgomery Ward was very popular. In this particular case, this is an actual authentic Brother Correcto Ball XLI. Now, if you look at the keyboard, it's kind of like a modern-looking keyboard as far as typewriters go. It is electric. And if you look here, you'll see on the top there, now this is a spare, spare ball that came with it. This is script. And it's metal. But I've been doing research, and as far as I know, you cannot put, even though they look almost identical, you cannot put an IBM Selectric font ball in here. This is specifically for Brother. Under the hood, you have a carbon cassette ribbon, okay? Again, for its time when most typewriters were using cloth ribbons, uh, inked ribbons that had a black line and a red line, you could switch between black and red, this was rather rare. IBM Selectrics did have this design um, and quite a few years beforehand, but overall, this is quite rare. In order to change the ball, if I can get my fingers in here, you slide this little thing to the side and you lift up, okay? That little notch on the left side coincides with the little notch you can see on that inner ring. That's the only way it will fit. Now, this is a black plastic ball, and this is a metal script ball. This is super rare. So when I saw this, I had to have it. And there's a little notch again. So what you do is basically take the font ball, you place it over the little stem there, make sure that it's lined so that it doesn't rotate, and then you slide that over, and you're good to go. Over here, you'll see this is a lift-off type correction ribbon and the take-up spool for the correction ribbon. And of course, this is a cassette that uses the carbon ribbon as opposed to an inked cassette. You would lift or pull this towards you and take this out. It's a little finicky to do with one hand, so I'm not going to do it right now. But this, like I said, this typewriter, I've been eyeballing this thing for a while. It's portable, by the way. It comes in a hard shell case that snaps on to it, and it is portable. It's I, I would say it's luggable. I wouldn't quite say it's portable. I wouldn't take it uh, camping with me like I might do a uh, an ultra-thin, uh, ultra-portable, you know, <laughs> manual typewriter. It's luggable. And I believe it's a little bit more lightweight than an IBM Selectric, which was never really designed to be a portable typewriter. So this kind of incorporates... A lot of what I'm looking for, and that's why I was seeking these out. This one was in mint condition. I couldn't say no. So having just loaded the paper the normal way, um, it does have a power return, which is cool. And it does have the um, correction 
with this little X here. So if you make an error, you would backspace, you would hit the correct button, and it would lift up the correction ribbon, and you strike the same letter. It sticks to the page, and when it pulls away, it literally rips that word or that letter right off the page. It's a fairly quiet typewriter. I've seen another video out there where it makes a little whirring noise before it kind of settles in. It's super whisper quiet. And then, come up here. Actually, we'll do a little power return there. So I hold this with one hand while I'm filming. One of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is to show you when you hit the uh, power shift, It's done with a solenoid. So as you press it down, it just does that automatically. So it's half the ball for the, I guess, the lowercase letters, and the other half of the ball would be for the uppercase letters. So let's see what happens. If I can... Yes, I typed that wrong on purpose, because now what you do, if you want to fix it, you hit that button after you've backspaced. Hit the correction button, hit the same letter, boom. Boom, just like that. Quite the amazing little typewriter. Don't mind my foot. <laughs> and I do know that the Sears version, the Correcto Sphere, um, there is a one and a two. There is also, I believe, a Correcto Ball without this XLI. And they, there was another button here or something. I think that did the amount of pressure that it would hit. And there's, I think, there's something over here that did something else. But overall, this is, you know. They're very rare, they're very hard to find, and of course, every time you type a letter, or a word, it's money. Okay? You're using up the ribbon. Now, I was lucky to find a bunch of extra ones online, and they're actually going pretty cheap, surprisingly. I will grab as many as I can, so that I'll have this typewriter to be able to use, to be able to use it for my first novel, <laughs> whenever that may be. But ladies and gentlemen, that is my brother, Correcto Ball. Very rare, very unique, very interesting typewriter. And I would have to say... Whoops. Uh-oh. Let me fix that. There you go. Have a great day, and thanks for watching. The Brother Correcto Ball XLI or 1 awesome typewriter from circa 1983. A very, very rare typewriter indeed. If you look at them on eBay, you'll also find the Sears Correcto Sphere. Same exact thing. So, thanks for watching, and take care.